How we doing? This is Pastor Kent with you, and this is Abba's House Church. <coughs> We're going right back to the beginning. Um, just after heaven and earth were created, just after that happened, there was an epic battle in heaven. This is what we're going to be talking about today and why we're in the situation we're in. Let's have a word of prayer. Eva, thank you for being here with us. Bless God, strengthen and keep us. May these words go forth, prick spirits, and unhardened hearts, and say these things in Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Epic Battle in Heaven is the title of the message. War in Heaven in Scripture is in Revelations 12. Several modern Bible commentaries view the war in heaven in Revelations 12 as an ecological vision of the end of time as a reference to spiritual warfare within the church rather than the story of the original Satan Lucifer as an angel who rebelled against God in prime evil. The book of Revelation describes a war in heaven between the angels led by the archangel Michael against those led by the dragon identified as the devil or Satan who are defeated and thrown down to earth. Revelations war in heavens relate to the idea of fallen angels and possible parables have been probably in the Hebrew Bible and in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now the Dead Sea Scrolls were found many years after uh, the Bible was written. So to have them coincide one another is just phenomenal and, and this is what we have to understand. So the Dead Sea Scrolls, the fall of the rebel angels, is what it is. Some scholars discern the certain of the war in heaven in certain Dead Sea Scrolls, namely in the war of the sons of light and the sons of darkness, also known as the war scroll. The songs of the Sabbath service, song number five, and the Melchizedek document. Now, I have to explain that that the Melchizedek priesthood is the highest priesthood that there is. Um, the Aaronic priesthood gives a person the ability to baptize and to perform ceremonies but the Melchizedek priesthood which is the priesthood of Christ himself gives us that ability to perform 
the fruits or the gifts of the Spirit and to be able to um, do the same thing that Christ did upon this earth. The war scroll, according to Mayhem, Messior, the angel of light, who are identified with Michael, the prince of light, while fought in heaven against the angels of the darkness, who identified with Baal. So we see that Baal was a false god, as we see, while the sons of light and the sons of darkness on earth and during the last days of the seven battles described in the scroll will come and help the sons of light with the final victory. Song 5 of the Songs of the Sabbath as described the ecological war in heaven similar to the found that found in to the traditions and Archangel Michael in the war rule of the book of Revelations he suspect suggests that Melchizedek who is mentioned both in the Melchizedek document and the fifth of the sons of the Sabbath sacrifice may be a divine warrior who is involved in the conflict with the archangel Michael in the furious sense. So as we see, this Melchizedek person, who is not named, is the person who ends the war in heaven. That the Melchizedek document concurs a war in heaven is denied by teachers who remarks there is no hint or accent portion of the Melchizedek of the revelant of heaven beings against the heavenly council and the discerning spirit is traditional Baal. So Kavala, however, is the document originally was about the astrological war in heaven with the Melchizedek, an ironic high priest and military redeemer. I testify to you this is gospel, and this Melchizedek person is actually Jesus himself, because he is the only one that can carry that priesthood because he does the miracles of the world. So let us go to Revelations chapter 12. Now, according to what it says, that um, the Melchizedek uh, battle occurred between verses 7 and 13. But we're going to look at the whole chapter because there's, there's a lot in here. And a great sign was seen in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. 
and being the child, she cried, being in trouble and in pain, both bring forth. Another sign was seen in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon seen seven heads and ten horns, and of his heads seven demonics. So, are you getting the picture? Um, Revelations chapter 12 is the foretellation or the tellation of the birth of Christ and the actual um, battle which will occur in heaven. So, let us keep reading. And his tail draws the third part of the stars of the heaven. In other words, the one-third of heaven and he cast them to earth, and the dragon should before the woman who was about to bring forth, in order that when she brought forth, he might devour her child. So, <coughs> as we see that this woman who's giving birth begins to be controlled by the de demonic possessions that is on the seven heads. And she brought forth a male son who shall shepherd all the nations with an iron rod. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fell into the wilderness, where she was there, a place prepared of God, that they should nourish her there for a thousand two hundred and sixty days. So as you see, she gave birth to Christ's child. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels went to war with the dragon. And the dragon fought his angels. This is referring to Michael's angels. And he prevailed not. Nor was there a place found any more in the heaven. So the dragon failed and was beaten because of what was in the Dead Sea Scrolls that the Melchizedek person who is the Christ came and prevailed with Michael the Archangel to destroy the dragon or the devil and the great dragon was cast out, the ancient serpent. He was called devil and Satan. He who deceives the whole habitable world. He was cast out into earth, and his angels were cast with him. So now one-third of heaven is cast out of heaven. So they have to have a place to go. And I heard a voice in the heaven saying, Now is come the salvation and the power of the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. Now, see, he names the Melchizedek teacher, the Melchizedek owner, the Melchizedek priest, Christ.
for the accuser of our brethren has been cast out who accused them of before our God day and night so he began Satan or the the uh, dragon as it's called here started to knock down God and put him down see jealousy is a very ugly thing and it reared its ugly head see Jesus was created to save the world um, Lucifer the devil Sebelzebub or devil or Satan, whichever name you want to call him, was the most beautiful angel in heaven. And because of that, he became jealous and envious of Jesus. He wanted to be the one to save the world because he thought he was better than him. Because Jesus was born of a virgin and the devil was created by God and he figured that he was better well no and they have overcome him by reason of the blood of the lamb thank Jesus praise Jesus hallelujah and by the resin of the world of their testimony and have not loved their life even unto death therefore be full of delight, ye heavens, and yet ye dwell in them. Woe to earth and to the sea, because the devil has come down to you. So now we see where the devil was cast. The devil was cast down here to earth. Having great rage, knowing he has a short time, so he's literally see anger, rage, bitterness, remorse, and 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 and, and um, resentment fuel rage. Rage is a nasty thing to have. And when the dragon saw that he had been cast out into earth, he pursued the woman which bore the male child so now he continually tried to kill her line first he started with Eve then he went to Abraham's wife Sarah then he went to Rebecca David's wife and tried to stop this from happening but when he couldn't stop it from happening um, he in turn told hit or, or sorry um, Herod to kill the firstborn children but see the angel warned Joseph about what was going to happen and Jesus was saved <coughs> And there were given to the woman the two wings of the great eagle, that she might fly into the desert, into her place, where she is nourished there a time, and her place where she is nourished there a time, and times, and half the time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out his mouth behind the woman water as a river that he might be her be as one carried away by a river doesn't that just remind you of something The serpent spews lies, deceit, and bitterness, and hatred, and gossip, and bigotry, and racism, and stereotypical garbage, and we 
it says woman, but we as human beings just eat it up and we swallow that garbage. So, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So as we see, God, Jesus, helps us no matter what the situation and will always protect us. And the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed who kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So when he couldn't stop the birth, he tempted Jesus with the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the mind. And all three, you know, um, were utterly destroyed because Jesus did not fall for that foolish uh, behavior. Um, and at the end of it, he said to the devil, Get thee hence, for thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You know? Um, when we see how wonderful and great our Savior is, you know, You know, maybe you have been in bad situations, um, and having rough times. You know, <coughs> when we're lost and destitute. If you were like anything like me, you know, I was totally lost, you know, and I played witchcraft, uh, gothic, <laughs> I was involved with the bikers. I was an enforcer for the bikers. So I accepted Jesus Christ when I was 13 years old. And I knew at the age of 13 what I would be is I would be a pastor, which I am today. You know? But see, when I came back, um, after realizing this, that... It is through the lust of the mind, the pride of life, or the lust of the flesh that I walk away from God. And in my case, it was all three. I had to say this prayer. Um, you may have to stop and play this. This is a very long prayer. It's the rededication prayer. And it's like this. Abba, thank you for sending Yeshua, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, for dying for me. I confess all of my sins, converting, envy, lust, 
jealousy, drunkenness, sorcery, molestation, mentalism. Wantonness, sensual, gambling, revelings, attaching to riches or material goods, lawsuits against Christians, eliminations, exhortation, desire of money, desire of power, desire of sex. Anger at another's good fortunes, in other words, jealousy, desiring things of others, bitterness, flirting, or playing with temptation. And it is perfectly evident that the old nature does. It expresses itself in sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, involvement with the occult or with drugs or with alcohol, in feuding, arguing, bickering, complaining, fighting, becoming jealous and getting angry, in selfish ambition, Fornication, fornalism, integrity or envy, in, dark, in drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you now, as I have warned you before, those who do such things have no share in the kingdom of God. I rebuke the sins from the fourth Sorry. From the fourth generations, third and fourth generations, I call in Yeshua, Yeshua, to give me the fruits of the Spirit. Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, has put my old nature to death on the stake, along with my passions and my desires, since it is through the Spirit that we have life let it also be through the Spirit that we order our lives day by day. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, humanity, self-control. Nothing stands against such things. I ask you, my life and renew my soul. I ask this in the Messiah's name. Amen. <laughs> mm.
now that you've said that prayer, the devil has no claim on your life. Not one single ounce. Not one single shred. Because you just admitted all of your sin to the Messiah. And the Messiah is, by his words, compelled to do as you ask. And will give you that happiness, that peace, that tranquility, that longing for self-control. He will give you that. Our Lord and Savior will never give us more than we can stand. He will not take us to a place that he cannot get us out of. He will always show us a door, a way out, that we never have to worry. Ponder or wonder again. Your life is safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, Yahweh, Jehovah, Ro, the Lord. The devil cannot wrestle you away because you've given your life to him. You've rededicated your life back to him. It belongs to him. I can teach you how to learn to take that step day by day. May the Lord bless and keep you. Abba, thank you for being here with us. Bless, guide, strengthen, and keep us in thy way and in thy will. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you like this message, please leave a comment. Uh, if you like the page, please subscribe, and you will get notification every time that I do a message. I try to do a message every couple of days, depending on how busy my life is. Um, I'm looking forward to being your minister and your spiritual guide. May the Lord bless and keep you in everything you do and in everything you have. May God bless and keep you. Amen.